What's up, everybody? This is your girl Erica from the Classy Climb blog. And tonight we're talking energy. I know, I know. You're like, oh Lord, where are we going with this? Take a deep breath. Come in here with me. Drop your city and state. And yes, I have my native shirt on, the Natives Broken Treaty Hulk shirt. Um, let's let's get this cracking, okay? Because we're gonna get in and out. I've got an outline. You can see it in the description if you want to stay. After you read the description, stay. If you don't want to stay, I feel you, okay? So there's a lot that's been talked about since Kevin Samuel's passing. And I talk about the power of uh, energy, spirituality, and many other things. As a person who's Native American registered with two tribes, not one, but two. Um, and I've told you guys very clearly, if you go all the way back to see my family, we actually owned a plantation. And we were slave owners. So that's a whole nother can of worms. But I want to talk to you about the power of energy. Okay. Why are, and we'll start it here, but there's like 10 on the dot things I'm going to go over. First, why are everybody buying homes in a crazy madness? Right. Even if home, even if uh, home loans go up to 10 percent. Right. Why would people still buy? It's the same reason. <laughs> Hold on. I'm just going to get you on out of here for tonight. Um, it's the same reason if, right, cars, they'll buy a car and be paying 18% interest, 20% interest, 25%, 26%. And people don't believe me, but I can go in various Facebook groups and show you screenshot after screenshot after screenshot of crazy level interest on cars. And it is a mentality of this is my personal space and this car gives me energy. Just like when you're home, you're home, you set the tone for your home. This is why when I go and look at people's home, I can tell where their energy is. This is why one of the number one signs of depression, uh, other issues are a very chaotic home. Right. A lot of times we see these eviction videos out here on YouTube and they're like, oh, man, they live in filth. And I go, look at the parents. They're in absolute depression or some kind of mental illness. This isn't a normal way to live, right? Exactly, John. Even in the 1970s and 80s, like right at the beginning of the 80s, mortgages were 20% interest rates. But there, there's power and energy in owning your home. Now, imagine if people, think about it. Imagine if people are constantly moving, constantly moving, almost nomadic. Who's very nomadic in America? Hispanic communities from different places, right? Not all just not all Mexicans, not all El Salvadorians, not all Guatemalans, but there's been this nomadic moving, right? We used to at farms used to have transitional workers. They were seasonal berry pickers, seasonal collard green helpers, whatever, seasonal whatever, and then they would go be wherever else they wanted to be. In America, um, if you look at what black people are doing right now, they're doing the great reverse migration back down south. But what happens no matter when they move north or south? They can't get in because they can't, they don't have access to a home. So this is an energy conversation. I want you to understand. Now, I'm going to stop here on the home situation. And I'll pick it back up on the back end. Okay. Because there's a reason I'm doing that. I'm going to talk about retirement and homes on the back end. Now, number, number one, hair. And it's Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to you. But what's the number one way we can tell somebody's a mom? We'll say wait, right? And we'll say to the hairstyles. 90% of the times when you see, if you're at a, let's just say at a white soccer game, you see a bunch of boy cuts on moms. You see a bunch of short hair. And shout out to Aaron Clary if he's here. If not, it's okay. Uh, Aaron Clary always talks about the short hair and why they're <laughs> cutting all their hair off. And you'll ask women, they'll say, oh, it's just less maintenance. I don't have to worry about this. It's an energy conversation. But if you've ever traveled to Europe, if you ever traveled to Spain, Paris, Italy, women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s have long hair. It's not till they get grandma age, they cut it all off. They get about 70, 68, 65, and they cut all the hair off because hair has power. Now, a lot of you are like, well, Eric, you're saying this with fake hair in your head. Ah, ah, ah. There's a reason I'm doing this. If you, what, what season am I in right now? It's powwow season. Who, what am I going to do with my hair? Braid it down two braids and do what? Go to powwow season. Okay. Just, just, just want to put that clear. Okay. There's a strong energy tied to hair. 
Now, if you look at Native American tribes, uh, and if, if you actually look at in Africa, when we were in Africa, the people who res refused to be assimilated, the men in the tribes had long hair, had long braided hair. If you look at old Asian cultures, if you actually look at the Hindu Indians, hair is long, wrapped up in a turban. Um, I remember our neighbor showed us a picture of his driver's license right before he got married. He had long hair, Indian dude. And I was like, man, that's so cool. Why'd you cut your hair? And he smiled like, oh, somebody thought it was cool. His wife is like, because we were getting married, you have to cut your hair. You can't be walking around looking like that. His hair signified he was young and unmarried and could do whatever he wanted to do. Right? When you see these black women shave their head off, I'm always like, are you okay, sis? Not because I want you to have European hair, white beauty standards, because I'm actually noticing it's an extension. Like, like listen to what the women say when they cut all their hair off. Listen to what they say in these videos when you watch it. It's like, oh, I just released all this energy, right? I just <laughs> want you to understand hair has power. It's an energy thing, y'all. And so when you listen, when I... I'm not going to go rant too deeply into healthcare and all this stuff. They put these young girls on what is equivalent of a sex steroid, which is birth control, from like 14 to 30. And you meet all these women who look aged horribly. Their hormones are crazy. People calling them crazy, saying they're acting wow. And they're doing all this stuff. And we never tie it back to the fact that we have hormones in the cows, hormones in the chickens. We're giving them a sex steroid. So it's tricking your body that you're pregnant. So your body's just coughing out all these crazy hormones everywhere. And the reason I talk about that, there are several young white YouTubers, you can go watch this, don't take my word on it, who are turning 32 years old. And this is where this, this whole age like water versus age like wine comes from. And they're saying they're getting off birth control because they go to get tested for fertility and they have the fertility of a 40 year old. Let me say that again. They're getting tested after saying, man, I'm, my hormones are crazy. I'm out of whack. I'm getting off birth control. And they go get their fertility test and they have the fertility of a 40-year-old. And I'm not trying to do any weird bragging. Like I had a, a fibroid service a couple years ago, and you guys know that on this channel. I went to the doctor and they made me test every three months. They're like, oh my God, how do you have an egg count so high? That's interesting. That's so interesting. Because it was abnormal and they kept making me go get tested. And I said, hey, hey, why are we doing this much testing? Well, we're just trying to track it. You have the egg count of a 20-something-year-old. And that's weird because of your age, you're in your 30s. And I go, and my first thought in my head is, when I tell my doctor, hey, I'm not going to get this test no more. It's weird me out. He said, listen, I have older black women come here all the time with high egg count. I don't know why they're tripping when I sent your test work over there. So I want you to understand what's happening. We're putting all these people on these hormones. We're putting them in, we're perming their hair at a young age, slapping hormones up there. We're doing all this crazy stuff to people's hair. Okay. All right. And then we're waking them up or pulling them out. Right. Now I'm, I'm just going to say this, right. All of a sudden there's this big push of sun, sun cancer, sun cancer. You can get cancer on your skin, skin cancer, skin cancer. Go look at many European countries that don't use that much uh, sunblock. Now, you know, I know you're about to get mad at me, but listen, I want you to go study some of this in Italy. Now, Italy, Italians got some mix in there. You know, it is what it is, right? Um, but they are not using sunblock at the rates that we in America use sunblock. And if you actually look at what the doctors are saying that people hate so much, they literally go, the sun is beautiful for you. The sun is great for you. It's when you have a poor diet high oil, high fats, high sugars. It's like you're creating a what? Cesspool, right? And your body can't fight at its normal levels. So think about Africans. I'm not saying Africans can't get sun cancer. We all, skin cancer, we all know that, you guys. Please let, let's not dope it. But think about it. You got all these black people in Africa. They're not suffering at those rates. Fresh foods, fresh water, fresh energy, fresh I don't want to get too lost. I don't want to try to get too lost on it. But I just want to take that little moment to think about hair as you see hair when you go into other countries and where do they even get some of this hair from, right? This is, this is I think, synthetic. I can't remember the word. Um, but they actually cut hair off in realistic, religious, uh, words, religious ceremonies. So you're getting somebody's hair 
in a religious ceremony and you're gonna put it on your head okay i'm just gonna <laughs> just gonna just think about it for a second people same thing when i was in africa when i was in zanzibar i didn't use sunblock to the last two days why because we were overindulging on alcohol all we had was fish, spinach, and mushrooms every damn day. Lobster, mushrooms, fish, octopus. We had fresh foods. But we were all drinking as a group every night. So the last two days, all of a sudden, I started sunburning across my chest. I told you I got blisters all over my arms up here. I mean, I peeled head to toe. And the African guys are like, oh, oh, what's wrong with you? You need more water. You need more water. It's not natural for people to burn. That's it's 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 abnormal, right? And we're on the plane coming back, and all these Europeans have big, huge patches all over their backs, peeling, red, sunburned, just burned, all kind of crazy. And I go, this cannot be the same white people that invaded y'all and took y'all over because they like they about to die from being in a week vacation. These can't be the same. They just can't be, right? So I'm gonna I'm move on from there. I'm gonna move on because <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. Number two. <sighs> Number two, energy transfer, food, people, places. If you understand the power of food. Now, if you guys haven't noticed, and you probably haven't noticed yet, and we'll do a big talk on it later this year. I've been fasting in the morning and I eat about four o'clock, right? Just water, no food, four o'clock. Lost a bunch of weight, feel energy, feel super up, change diet, pretty much just like a protein and a, and a veggie, protein and a baked veggie over and over and over again, right? And the guy was like, wait, what's up with this new, 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 what's up with you? Hey, you've been coming into lifetime early in the day. And I go, well, I'm just switching up the schedule, All right? I'm switching it up. It's, it's springtime here in Texas. Y'all say, man, it was hundred degrees yesterday. It's summer. No, no, it's springtime in Texas. Everything's green. The waters and the lakes are full. It's springtime. All right. Diamond Dave even said in his videos, when he lived in Florida, you have the same weather all the time. So it's hard to do what? Have cycles for the body. Springtime. Summertime, fall, winter, right? It just means, it just means that. I mean, I just want you to understand that, right? That food has power. Um, they've done surveys and studies where they gave kids and, and juvenile detention centers healthy fruits and vegetables for a whole week. Guess what? All this violence came down. All the attitudes, all the raging came down. Why? What they're feeding them. You go to school, the lunches at school are terrible. Kids are, are not paying attention in class. Uh, I remember at our school, they had Coca-Cola machines or Pepsi, North Carolina, sorry. And they took all the Pepsi machines out and gave us nothing but Gatorade options and high C. The, the energy came down. The craziness in the classroom came down. The tripping on there came down. Why? It's this constant thing of sugar and caffeine. We had Mormons at our school in North Carolina. And one day they were like, well, what's that over there? I said, it's, it's tea, it's sweet tea. Well, does it have caffeine? Well, we laughed and lied to them and said, no, it doesn't. So the Mormons got up and got the sweet tea and they started drinking it and they immediately put it down. And one of the white girls beside us felt bad. She said, honey, don't drink that. It has caffeine and sugar in it. And you could see the girls nervous. And I don't know what goes on in Mormon culture. I'm not trying to talk bad about them or any, any kind of way, but there's a reason we keep our kids at a young age away from sugars and caffeine. There's a reason. Okay. There's a reason. Okay. Okay. There. Listen, you're going to feel it. You feel the seasons. Like, you know, uh, if you look at Chicago in the summer, they go out. It's open. It's not cold. It's three good months of not being cold. Right. Look at some of these places on the East Coast. They go out. The Jazz Fest, the conference. They just love summer. They're out summering every day. Right. Everybody on YouTube numbers, traffic, money goes down in the summer. You run your ads in the summer because in the summer people go and do what they're going to do. Thank you, John. Yes. So we thank you for clarifying. But we literally lied to the kids and they start drinking and they start getting nervous and they went and poured it out. Our PE teacher was like, don't play with them like that. And I'm like, whoops, we're just joking. You know what I mean? So. Um, food, people and places. When P I posted on my wall. I flipped the coin and this is y'all got to learn how to read. OK, <laughs> I'll be working on them paragraphs, making them better English. But y'all also got to learn how to read. I said many, many moons ago. That means years ago, cycles ago, I flipped the coin. 
okay, whether I was going to go to Austin, Texas, or Nashville, Tennessee. And people say, why? I understand Nashville, but I don't understand Austin. Water. I'm a Pisces. I'm a Native American. I live around water. I'm from a city that the water was cursed. I kid you not, and this sounds so crazy, but people believe it. I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina. And you will look up Fayetteville and Robertson County's crime rates and people are like, they're crazy. Why is the crime so crazy? And then when we went to school, because North Carolina education was part of your history, was part of your education, you had to do it. Blackbeard cursed the Cape Fear River. He's like, I hope everybody who touches the Cape Fear River is, is, you know, basically has a bad life, bad energy, et cetera, et cetera, right? And I always thought, what a, what a bunch of baloney is what other people in my family used to say. What a bunch of baloney. But my grandma said, that's, that's not baloney. Look how the people act here in this one part, this one region. There's just people don't understand places, energy, and food, okay? Energy transfer, people. Sometimes you'll interact with people and you realize, I can only take this person in small doses. I'm a big energy person. I'm a big light, big energy, big charm, big whatever person, however you want to describe it. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, look at that. Skynet trying to take away my voice. All right. So um, I was talking about water, wasn't I? Okay, I had to fix the sound. So long story short, I am choosing a beach house off one of the 13 beach islands of North Carolina uh, for income and for also for my family and us to hang out with. Every year at Christmas... Uh, we take a week before Christmas, the whole family goes and spends the week in the middle of winter of North Carolina at a beach house. And people think, oh, that's so weird. You guys are weird. It's so cold. You're not even gonna get in the water. It's not about the water. It's not about getting in the cold water. It's about hearing the water. It's about family togetherness. It's about us, an energy transfer, an energy transfer. Okay. And I was talking about people. Now I see what I'm saying. I was talking about people and there are people you can only do in small doses. You, you can't take them in big doses. And I'm a big light, big energy person. And I can even tell with my friends that I'm like, ooh, I done wore her out. Like <laughs> telling her my day, telling her about YouTube, whatever, right? Um, and so you have to you have to pay attention. And also when you're a big energy light person like me, full of joy, you attract a lot of people. So you have to be careful who you entertain. I, I hope you understand that. You, you have to be careful who you entertain. If y'all don't, I hope y'all don't lose, get lost in that conversation because we about to hit some other ones. I'm going to step on some toes, right? Hugging people anymore. Yes, I'm a big hugger. And if we we have a good conversation, I'm going to hug you before we leave. If we have an off conversation, I'm going to look at you crazy. Y'all see me at the boat party. I hug certain people. Some people I'll just be like, mm-hmm, that's a little crazy, but okay, right? So again, again, that kind of thing, right? Um, number three. In the whole energy transfer, I hope y'all understand. Everybody got the energy transfer, hit a one in the comments if you understand. Number three, young people obsession. Young people obsession. There is this obsession, especially in America, 18 to 25. If you go over to Italy, you go over to uh, Spain, uh, if you go over to Korea, there is this, there's this reverse for older people. Like, oh my God, you lived, you fought wars, you've traveled, you've experienced life, you own a restaurant, all this stuff. Like later in life activities and people are more revered. But in America, we flip it. It's just sick obsession with 18 to 25, right? You can even hear it here on this internet. Oh yeah, get you a girl that's 20. Yeah, she doesn't know. And again, listen to what they're saying. It's an energy transfer. The number, number Seven people I know right off the top of my head that talk about dating young 20-somethings, they're always talking about it in an energy way. They don't always talk about it like sexually everything's great and better. Or, yeah, she's young. They talk about it in an energy way. Yeah, you got to get you a younger girl. You know, it'll bring up your energy and y'all can go out and do things. And, and she's more fluid and flexible with what you want to do. These are people talking that are in their 50s and their energy is waning. Listen to how they're talking. Their energy, their life force, their level of energy is waning. 
Okay. Okay. I just want you to understand that. Like, there's this obsession with young people. Now, let me let me slide over to where it gets weird. Okay. Just for a second, we're gonna get back out of the weird. Look at these young moms that have no husbands. We're gonna go there first, but there are one women with husband. We're gonna hit them too. It's this race on Instagram to show you their baby. And you're like, look at it. Look at it. You're like, all right, dude, I, I, I think it's beautiful. Like, I don't love it like you love it, but I think it's beautiful. But there is this super too close of a bond. I posted something in Community Wall where the woman's son is went in the military. She done tattooed her son's name on her breasts and down her to her belly. She's taking photos with him like she's his wife. Like she's dressing up in a military uniform with him. It's like over the top and it's creepy, but there's a lot of women who literally they'll have a child and they're just at home every single day. It's every single day. Every single day. They don't go anywhere. They don't do anything. Um, when I come home to my hometown, I'll come home and tell my family about all these events that's in town. Man, how did you know about all these events? I never heard of them. This is very common with most people that live somewhere. They get in a very monotone position. Every day I get up, I go to work, I go home, I go to sleep. Every day I get up, I go home, I go to work, I go to sleep. Every day I go home, I get up, I go to work, I go to sleep. This is how you'll wake up and you'll see children that are 12 and 13 years old and they're morbidly obese. And you ask the mom what they're doing, they're take, eating takeout every day. She doesn't even have the routine of cooking anymore. Right. Or there's this over attachment to the children where they're living vicariously through them. Right. And you see what happens to these kids when they become adults. They run away from these people. They move. They mama live in, in California. They move all the way to Georgia. They mama live in Florida. They move to Oregon. <laughs> right. Because they're trying to break that energy. Look at the Kardashians. Rob, this was trying so hard to pull his wife, Courtney, away from their family into a separate space. I've been on dates here in Austin and black men will ask you where your family live at. I'd be like, oh, they live in North Carolina. Are you one of them girls that got to move home if your mama gets sick? I was taken aback. I'm like, what kind of question is this? But as I'm getting older and the men I'm dating older, they have whole women that will just break up with them, leave and move back home to their home state because they got to take care of their family because they're that connected. Right. They can't. And again, this is also a financial thing. If you can't send enough money home to support your parents in an emergency health emergency, then you're just going to move because you're like, I'm going to be close to them every day. Right. I have a couple friends whose parents recently died. And like the connection was so strong that this person is like, I don't know what to do with my day. Because my parent is gone. And I go, well, your friends, your family, you know, you can go to work, you can do this. And they have, they, they, the energy transfer and the, like when it's too close of a connection, this person can't function. I've seen this. It's called caretaker. Uh, if somebody in the comments know what the word is, look it up for me real quick. It's a caretaker, uh, something wrong. It's like they, they get stuck in the position of caretaker fatigue. I think it's what it's called. Um, where they're glad that person's gone, but that's their identity as a caretaker. And what else do they do? This is caretaker can also be for moms too. They become this caretaker. And what else are they supposed to be doing? Okay. So just, I, I can go in a whole nother, other levels with this, but I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna stop. Okay. <laughs> Number four, uh, there's a white YouTuber that's white, super hot on YouTube right now. And he's always predicting doom and gloom. And you can tell, and I'm just going to go there. Y'all know who I'm talking about. He's a short white dude. There's nothing spectacular about him. He's like any other average white dude. If you walk past him on the street, you wouldn't know who he was. You wouldn't even care, right? He doesn't have a deep voice. No, there's nothing. He's average at best, as they say, right? <laughs> and he moved to Austin because Austin's a hot city now. But think about the, the energy of Austin, the water. The people, the fresh food, the money that's here, it's a, it's, it's, it's a system, okay? So he comes here, you know, braggadociously. I'm from, I make all this money on YouTube. And he was mad because he would talk to women downtown. And he said they were dummies. Let's, 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 let's tune that in. He said you talk to women downtown and they were dummies. And one of the most highly educated cities where most women of a certain age are in tech or have a certain type of job, you were talking to dummies. So that sounds like you were talking to girls who are 19 to 21 and they could not give a shit that you make a bunch of money on YouTube. 
You know why? Because you're 10 years older than them. And there's a city full of young dudes out here that are getting new jobs in tech and making 80, 90,000 a year. So now they can just date a couple years up to a 28 year old and they can go to music concerts and drink and have fun and have a great time with the guy that's closer to their age. If I could tell you all the stories of my friends who work in tech here, who are men saying this, that they work with a bunch of 40, 50 year old men and the men are mad because they're like, women, <laughs> these women are impressed. They want too much. And they go, well, dude, what, what kind of women are you talking to? These, look at the girls. And they show them their phone as a bunch of 20-somethings on apps. Why would an under 25-year-old want a 50-year-old dude that has a house in Round Rock and a car when she's downtown Austin partying and enjoying her life and could just go 10 years up and still do all those same things? <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all, if you could hear the conversation we have and our friends are cracking us up where they're trying to not laugh in these dudes' faces where they're like, Dude, that doesn't even make sense. She just wants you for your money. I mean, and they come to work complaining about, they just want me for my money. Well, well why else should she want you, dude? You're bald, you're fat, like you're an engineer, you're not. They don't want you for nothing else. Y'all, it's where people get, they get out of, they, they get into these delusional states of thinking, I'm going to pull energy from somebody younger. It, it, you can't do it. It don't work that way. So this same YouTuber that tried to impress people downtown and got mad because young, young, hot women didn't want him. He moved to his next logical place where you can play the money game, Dallas, Texas. And, and other YouTubers, we watch each other's videos. So if he sees this, he knows I'm talking about him. I don't care. I'll see him at vid some in a little bit anyway. And at an event in Dallas. So I'm, I don't care. He can say something to my face. He's in Dallas now because that's where you can play that game. You can go to Dallas and have a, a brand new Audi a brand new car and some girl who's super into status because that is the nature of Dallas, not of Austin, will be like, oh yeah, money. He got some money. He got some money. He got some money. Hmm. Energy. It's a different energy. That's why I tell you when you move to Dallas or you move to Houston and people say, why did you move to Austin? I said, energy, the water. If you go to Houston right now, if you got a nose that works, you smell... You smell the difference in the air in Houston. The air quality is bad. Lots of traffic. Lots of seat, seat, lots of concrete. Like Austin's this green oasis of water and hill country and wineries and food and farms. And, and Houston is Houston. It's trying to be a mini Atlanta, but it's too spread out. And its air quality is not great. <laughs> right? So it's an energy to this space, right? And then there's people in Dallas who think, well, we're in Dallas. We're the best city ever in Texas. And we make all the money when we already know that's not true compared to Austin. But, um, you know, even the numbers for black people doing successfully, Dallas isn't on the list. Houston and Austin are and San Antonio. But that's another question. That's another thing for another day. Energy is important. There's a video with Bun B. I know a rapper. <laughs> I know a rapper, right? Um, and he talks about how so many people are ta super talented in Houston. Now, Dallas has the most Grammys. Let me just kind of put that out there. Dallas, if you guys go look it up, has the most Grammys for written songs, produced, et cetera, et cetera. Erica Badu, all these people up in Dallas. But Houston has this huge music scene. And Bun B was saying, is something so sad is so many of our Houston rappers went to Atlanta to hit it big because the people and the energy that is Houston. And I don't know if everybody understands that, but that's a big thing. There's people in my life that if I don't pick up the phone, hey, hey, you're all right? I'm, I'm just fine. I'll call you in 30 minutes, okay? All right, so... Um, so there's this there's this energy transfer and it matters where you're located, right? So anyway, that's <sighs> y'all. There's so much I want to say tonight, but I'll be good. Th this is yes, yes, earnest vibes. It's called transmutation of sexual energy. That's why old businessmen have young secretaries. I hired somebody. I hired four young girls on my staff that were in their twenties, and the energy in the office was like, bam. Bam, up here, up here, let's do this. Hey, 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 how many of this do we need? Let's do this, let's do this. I'm like, all right, y'all, chill, chill, chill. I've gone to other people's offices, same thing. Young staff, energy high, thinking of all these fresh, creative, new ideals. Hiring young people does help your business. It just does. 
uh, and there's a reason for it. Energy, y'all. Okay. Um, that's why if you look at seven figure flipper or no, what's the name? Seven figure, whatever that Hawaiian dude that looks like of uh, the rock. He, he always talks about all the time. His whole staff is in his twenties. All right. That's why I watch British TV. The main character. Yo, this is so true. Like, um, Y'all know my ex fiance mom was British, but that's a whole nother conversation. And we would watch these shows. And I, and after we broke up, I couldn't watch British TV for a year. But then I started watching British TV again. And most of the characters and the actors, they make all these wars when they're in their 40s and 50s. I'm just telling you. They make all this. Yep. 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 Son husbands is so creepy, y'all. I've, I've literally, I dated this guy and his mom was like at the hip. We talked about moving to another city and she was like, that's kind of far from me. Like, what? Say what? We going 45 minutes down the street. What? There's a whole book. There's a whole series of books talking about overconnectivity. And if you get marriage with an overconnected person, how to break some of those tides. But that's another video for another day. <laughs> okay. Again, in that energy conversation. Okay. Um, where am I? At? I'm. A, I got my list here. But, but yeah. It, even ask Tim Jackson. Tim Jackson's in here. Ask him about the energy in Dallas versus Houston. And even he said Houston looked like Southeast Dallas, <laughs> right? And, and the reason I bring those studies up is Dallas versus Houston versus Atlanta. Now, I'm not going to go all woo-woo on y'all, but just enough. I'm a very intuitive person, a very spiritual person, a very high energy, high light, high joy. And every time I step foot in Atlanta, I'm I'm, I'm going to go there. Atlanta, Charleston, South Carolina, and this one other slave state. When I step foot into those places, the energy level. Same, same when I go through Louisiana. Something about New Orleans it, and Atlanta. The, my spirit be like, we got to get up out of here. Something is in this air. What is going on here? Now, listen, I ain't knocking Wakanda, whatever. It's Wakanda, whatever, right? Everybody loves Atlanta, but I can't do more than three days in Atlanta. I always think I'm going to get an apartment there. And then I'm like, why would I get an apartment here? Something about the energy is off in this city. I'm not going to go all spiritual woo crap on y'all, but again, so, high levels of witchcraft and magic and black magic are in that city. You don't take my word for it. You ever visit, just, just to give you the equivalent, right? Go to Louisiana or go to South Carolina and visit a plantation and just close your eyes. Just don't even do it. Just stop. Stand there and close your eyes. Cross your arms and close your eyes. The levels of energy vibing in those places, if you're actually a spiritually awake person, is off the charts. And I'm gonna leave it there because I don't want to lose my channel, <laughs> right? I just wanna, I just wanna make that out there for y'all. I just want you to understand, like, the energy. Exactly, Mark. There's a whole other world going on, and most people have no clue. Yeah, we'll leave that alone. We'll leave that alone. We'll just, we'll just put that there, and and walk away. But there's reasons why I don't. Like, I would love to do Essence Festival, but after three, I'm gonna have to leave. I just something about the energy, the mentality, everything about Louisiana. And when, you know, say what you will about Hurricane Katrina, when they flew those people out of there, I've actually talked to people here in Austin that have a restaurant. They never went back. Never. went. Ten years later, never stepped foot in the damn place. They said everybody they knew and loved were beside them and they never turned back. They're like, the city was horrible, the emotions, the environment, it was traumatizing. They never went back. There's a lot of spiritual stuff in, in, in New Orleans too, but we'll same thing happening in Charleston, South Carolina, but we'll leave, we'll leave these places alone. And Savannah. If you ever read a lot of books on Savannah, a lot of horror mystery books. There's a lot of like, listen, them old houses, I would love to buy an old house in Charleston, but I'd have to bust out a gallon of holy water over that house before I walked up in there or lived in there. We got an old house in our family, honey. We never, we don't even go to that bad boy. We have too many family members dying. We didn't. We don't even go to that mother. We'd be like, "Hey, rent it out." But we ain't gonna live in there. We just ain't gonna do it. Okay. So anyway, next. Let me go on next. I'm going next. I think I talked about why I moved to Austin. Water. I think I already hit number five. Water. The power of water. Uh, I'm a water sign. I'm a Pisces. The energy is connected to water. If you actually look at just the vibe of Austin, I know people are like, "Oh, it's boring." What do you guys do there? 
live at peace, live in charm, play on the water. That's what we do. Um, number six, there's a band called Florence and the Machine. And I'm using it as a segue to talk about some witches on the internet and, and energy, right? Florence and the Machine, I listened to one of her songs, The Dog Days Are Over Now. And I was just like, yes, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I love this song. It's amazing. The energy with this song is amazing. And so then I bought the CD. And I had to drive from, um, where did I drive from? I either drove from Houston to Austin or I drove from somewhere. And it was three hours to listen to this CD. And I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. This girl trying to, she trying to put us in a trance or something. This is some witchcraft on this CD. I got to, this CD got to get out my car. And people are like, oh, you're being weird. I'm like, no, listen, something's off about her. Literally, maybe two weeks later of, or three weeks later, they interviewed her in an interview. And she said, oh, yeah, I'm a witch. Very powerful witch. Witchcraft's in all my songs. And all the music. We seance before we do any of this stuff. I was like, did anybody hear that? Man, I, I had that CD in the car. I said, hey, anybody want this CD? Oh, it's Florence and Machine. I'll take it. And I was like, oh, here, have it. Like, I could not listen to the song, y'all. I was driving and was like, what is happening here? D okay, nope. This, song, this has to go. And if you're actually spiritually awake or just an awake person, you can see this stuff everywhere. And you can hear it like in the music and how people act. Um, I went to go see Dr. Strange and I'm not going to call it spoilers, but Dr. Strange, this edition of Dr. Strange was loaded down with witchcraft and dead necromancer, like all kinds of stuff on levels that I was like sitting in the audience with my friend and we left out. I'm like, did you notice they had the witchcraft up on 10X? They had the spiritual stuff on 10X. They had the death stuff on 10X. She said, yeah, I noticed that. That was kind of weird. Just, again, Dr. Strange put the strange in Dr. Strange this time. But I'm not going to ruin it for y'all. Go watch it. Um, But on YouTube, there are several women who have said, there's a woman very popular in Houston. I don't want no beef. I don't want no foul. She said that she's a witch. And, like, you watch her shows. And, you know, we watch, some, just, I'll name a list of people's shows where they light a candle in the background or in the front. They have stuff moving over here to the right or the left of the show and very much talking in a, in a, a trans type of way. Um, you know, I joked one time, somebody said on the channel, Eric, you sound like you're trying to brainwash us to start businesses. I said, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to brainwash you into a new way of thinking. Every day you watch these videos, that's what I'm doing. Um, but there is, there are several YouTubers who are displaying witchcraft and, and openly and people are like, oh, Eric, are you being dramatic? I'm like, but they're saying they're witches and you don't care? No, I don't care. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> like, like, all righty, buddy. I'll let that go then. So there's a, there's just certain music that, you know, I listen to or don't. I deal with or don't. Um, and it's because it's energy. Energy. Okay. Number eight, moving to new city sparks energy. Uh, this, this happens every time people go on vacation. Oh, my God. I'm going to live here. This is amazing. Yeah. You know. Um, you know what I mean? Like they just have this energy. Exactly. They're living vicariously through their kids. This is a very big thing. It's an energy thing. Um, and what ends up happening is there is this energy when you move, you're alert, you're alive, you're paying attention, you're looking at all the new opportunities. That's why I can come here to Texas and I'll talk to black people who lived in Austin for 30 years. Oh, you know, ain't no opportunities out here. It's terrible. And I'm like, are you serious? Look at all this. 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 And they'll be like, oh, I never knew of that. I'm like, you've been living here 30 years? And it's because moving opens new energy, right? If it, When people call, give me consult calls, I've had, and I'm going to be very, very clear. Um, I've had about 30 in the past month. Women and men, 35 to 45, call and saying, hey, I'm going to move. I'm going to move cities. I'm going to move cities. Skyna is like not letting me be free. <laughs> Drop a one in the comments if you can hear me. Okay. I go, listen, you're, you're, you're 35 to 45. I'm just going to do this window range. Listen, when you move, you got to dedicate the next two years of your life to going and doing everything. And they go, what, what, what? 
If you're going to move to this new city, you got to go to meetups, you got to go on dates, you got to go on Tinder, you got to go on events, you got to go to conferences, you got to go to concerts, you got to check out new churches, you got to do what new city energy requires. And on the phone, it usually gets quiet, like, well, you know, maybe, maybe I can go to one event a week. I said, listen, no, there's no point in you moving to a new city and you're just going to go out one day a week. Eventually, what's going to happen is you're going to go, well, I might as well just move back home because, you know, this is what I was doing in my old city. Moving requires energy. Moving and living in a new city requires new energy. So if you're going to call me and on the phone, you go, Erica, I want to move to the city. What do you think? What should I do? Baby, do you got the energy? Do you, can you manifest the energy to pick it up and move? And, and, and then for the next two years, really dig deep into a community. This is a true answer. You guys got to ask yourself this stuff where you're like, well, I'm going to move. I, I mean, I literally put 10 years of my life here in Austin. And I'm like, whew, shit. Now I got to go out here and, and almost for 90 days-ish, off and on, be in Tampa and St. Petersburg, managing and watching the properties. Because if you ain't over there all day looking at them people like they crazy, work might not get done. That's just all. If you ain't over there like, hey, 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 I'm over here. What's up? What's up? What's going on? What's up? So now while I'm in it, when I'm over there and I'm not at the property, what am I doing? Investing, looking, to, investing myself in the city of Tampa and Florida and that part of Florida, right? Going to conferences, going to real estate meetups. Hey, shit, might even go on a few dates, whatever, you know, different stuff while you're there, right? Okay. Does that make sense about energy and moving and how it sparks new things? Okay. Now, here's the last one, and I'll tie it back to housing in, in this. There's this, if you look this up, this is one of the most searched questions on YouTube and on Google. Um, will one more year of work make a difference in retirement? And I didn't understand where this was coming from because I'm, I'm not retirement age, right? I'm just not. Um, and then I started just like studying it, reading, watching the videos because I want to see what people are feeling. And they feel the energy. That it's time to let go of whatever it is, the job they're currently in, whatever it is, it's some type of job. They're, they're, it's time to go. It's time to wrap it up. My mom had brain surgery and was like, she said she went back to work and she was there for a month and was like, oh, it's time to go home. I'm confused. It's time. <laughs> right? And now she's years later after surgery, she's back better. She's running a smaller business and she's like living her best life. Right. But your body and your brain and your energy levels will tell you when it's time to shift. That's why I don't, I'm never upset when you guys call me and say, hey, I want to move. And I'm in my late 30s and 40s. I go move, baby, but take take everything. I mean, you're going to bring this energy for the next two years of I want to move and start new somewhere and really do it and really follow through. Okay. So will one more year make a difference in your retirement? Yes. I believe this. I believe when you're preparing your mind and body to retire, which be careful of the words because most people retire and get bored out of their mind. You should be building up hobby skills, organizations, United Way, volunteering, something. You should be building up stuff to do once you are physically retired. There's this imaginary American life where I'm just going to relax and take naps. And you'll look up in five years, you'll be dead. I promise. Like our bodies are meant to be in motion and doing things, even if we are just building a little whatever, tinkering on. And so I've watched my mom who retired early, couldn't become a cop because of the brain surgery have to go find new things to do. And there was like a year where she was slowing down. I said, no, you need more to do. We need to give you more to do because just taking all these naps and laying around all day, that's not, that's not healthy. And she's never been more happy and alive than now she's got this little business. She's running around. She's getting the things done. She's taking my nephews to places and you can see the energy pop back up. Like she's five more years younger. And she jogs and runs two miles a day with a group and do all this stuff. You got to keep that energy up. That's why when I hear these people on the internet talking about how they're going to marry some 20 something. No, you're not. Your energy is too low already for you to attract even a young person. They see the energy vampire coming from you. They're going to get this money and dip. They're not staying long. You get sick in the next five years, they're going to take them and that baby and they're going to roll. I'm just telling you. There's a great little uh, thing that went viral on TikTok and it's a 60 year old dude. He's sitting on the couch. I'm trying to think of something. He's holding this pen. This is a toy. He's holding it. And he's knocked out sleep. I mean, he's completely knocked out sleep. And his two-year-old, his little four-year-old's hitting it. 
hitting it and laughing because he's asleep. Like they're supposed to be playing. And the woman recording it goes, oh, my Lord, y'all, my my husband over here asleep. And she puts in the comments, he's 60 years old. And so they're just roasting her to death. Like, girl, he's 60 with a four-year-old. What y'all doing? Oh, my God, that's crazy. But that's that's what people don't understand. Your 50-year-old energy, your 60-year-old energy, your 70-year-old energy is different from 25-year-old energy. It's different from 35 and it's different from 45. And if you actually listen to some people in the comments, oh, I'm 50 and I do this and do that, that's because your level of energy is that high. That's because you are actively forcing that energy. But go look at the average 75% of the community at 45. They ain't doing that. Look at them at 55. They're not doing that either. Right? We got people out here. Uh, I go to a place called Stretch Zone. And the young people stretch your arms, legs, you're bending, you're doing all the stuff, doing all the stretching. And you think you get up and you stretch in a day. No, no, this is a whole nother level of stretching. You're going to come out of there and be like, whoo, Jesus, that was great. I see little old elderly people in there trying to lift their legs. Honey, mobility is the juice of life. If you cannot walk, and there's no knocking people in wheelchairs and all stuff like this, not the kind of this, but if you can't walk, comfortably like when i see all these guys with big beer bellies with guns on their hip baby by the time that man bum rush you it's over you got to be able to be mobile you got to be able to move your body so in that last year of preparing for retirement and working your job you should be looking up ways to increase your health mobility exercise and your finances you should be tangling down your finances this is such a big question on the internet and i couldn't figure out why but you do know we have all these baby boomers so you know just is what it is. Uh, and number 10, back on housing. Let me look over some of y'all comments and then I'll kind of wrap it up. A real conversation with a guy I know on the brink of divorce because his wife family is always at their house staring up mess. He knew that before they had married and thought he could change it. So that's an issue of boundaries. There is a great book talking about if your mother or father take over responsibility of your life, you will take under responsibility. You will always kind of put yourself in this child's position that's weird. Um, same thing when our parents start to get older, we start taking over responsibility for their life. And that's part of the life cycle. And so they take under responsibility. Somewhere in there, uh, that's a part of a book called Overconnectedness. And it's a great book. It doesn't mean you don't love your family any less, but there's a level of overconnectedness. Now, I will say, if you look at old families, and I'm, I'm talking about 1920s and up, 1930s and up, every family had a sister that was unmarried. Let's just go there. <laughs> or they had the uncle that was a confirmed bachelor, wink, wink, like he never married anybody. And they were the extra helpers in a family, always. It just was what it was. The, the extra uncle that was a helper financially or the extra um, auntie that didn't have kids was a helper. Uh, my grandmother was one of 14 kids or 15, 15 kids. And they had two sisters like that, that lived in New York. One lived in New York and one lived out West and they would send home money. And I was like, grandma, how was she able to send home money? They're like, she had no, she had no kids and her and her husband had made all this money. And back then it was like an honor to send money back home to your family. And so we still live under some of these olden ideals and olden time things that don't work anymore. We don't, right? So again, that's an energy issue. They're having a boundaries issue and an energy issue. <laughs> no, I don't have any tons of scary stories right now, but I will do a scary story night for one day. I was a caretaker while in college part-time shaking my head. I'm so sick of this. Yes. Yes, John. It's it, it, Yeah, caretaker's remorse. Like they lose out, you know, 10 years of their life because they didn't do this or that and this and that. Yeah. Uh. Uh huh. Yes, yes, yes. That's very true. A lot of people move back home to North Carolina to take care of their parents. This is very true. Uh, who is twenty? <laughs> oh, you know, you know. We can go there. When I was in the wellness industry, we merely had to worry about caretakers because they forgot to take care of themselves. Yes, that part, that part, right? The balance of like, um. I was telling one of my family members that I go get a massage every week. I do this every week. I do that every week. Stretch zone and cryotherapy. And they're like, oh, must be nice. Just keep pampering yourself. And I'm like, no, because I want to live a long life and have mobility and walk and talk and, and have my limbs and my body not hurt every time I get up in the day. Like I'm watching older people who never took care of themselves break down. So, no, um, you know, the craziest part is my mom did the longest time in the military, had multiple surgeries, and she's the most active family member we have. 
Like she could literally run down the street right now. If a dog broke out chasing her, she going to leave all of us, get to the house, get in the car, come back, hit the dog with the car and get us. That, <laughs> and she's in her 60s. And so when my mom goes places with my aunts, several of, I say two of my aunts, uh, we had this lady, we were on vacation. This lady's like, oh, is this your, is this your grandmother and this your mother? And I'm just sitting there like, you know, because that's how well my mother's taking care of herself. And my other aunts, you know, for various reasons have not. One or two have um, more recent years. Uh, but yeah, we had one aunt lose 50 pounds one year because she, you know, was working at the post office and they switched her to a different um, a different part. And so she walking around all day. And she lost 50 pounds. Everybody's like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know that, you know, listen, come on. Men want a trick, but the tricks want a party. Listen, it is what it is. It's a game and people are playing it. It is a vitality thing. Yes, yes. I mean, I think I've told y'all several times about energy and in China, because there's such a shortage of women, they have this thing called lay flat um, uh, theory where people are just kind of giving up on life, right? Like we hear people in America talking about giving up American dream. They have the lay flat theory. So at workplaces, they were just pulling women from Thailand and the Philippines and other places and bringing them to China to walk around in some of these offices and just talk to people, bring them coffee, bring them tea, just be nice to guys. Go look at this article. It'll blow your mind. They had work production went up. People calling out sick went down. Guys coming to work happy went up. I mean, whether people, men want to hear this or not, I get it. I know it. I, I know you're tired of hearing it. Women are water. And men are thirsty. All right. Let me say that again. Women are water. Men are thirsty. This is why you had all these women calling Kevin Samuel's show. Because when they go out of their house, some old Fred, William, Jeffro was still hollering at them. Even if they were overweight with five kids hanging behind them. Why? Because women are water and men are thirsty. <laughs> And so when I hear these conversations where all oh, these women is, this, I look up every day and there's a fat woman married to some man living her best life. I, I, I hear what y'all saying. I get you. You should stay in shape and treat your husband wonderful. But guess what? They y'all will still marry them women and companion those women, even if they don't meet those standards. Why? Because of energy transfer. It's an energy thing. All right. Uh, Aaron Clary has been saying a lot of videos lately where guys are emailing him and they're saying, like, essentially, they're saying I have no will to live. If I don't have no girlfriend, I don't have no dog. See, you see see the men in the Skynet tried to counsel me. Um, I don't have no wife. I don't have no girlfriend. I don't have no dog. I don't have no children. What do I do with my life? And Aaron Clary's like, oh, my God, you guys made me want to, like, unalive myself listening to these emails like go out of your house go to concerts go music go grab some hobbies go get a girlfriend <laughs> like he's literally started to say that if you go watch Aaron Clary and he's been like forever Mr. MGTOW go your own way don't get into debt don't work too hard if you're not gonna get married and the emails he's getting is scaring him and that is the future of a lot of these people is they're gonna wake up at 40 and 50 I'm not dealing with no woman's and they and and what are they what is their what is their purpose in life, again, Tim Jackson, what is he talking about? Mr. Purpose on demand. Mr. Purpose on demand. Why does he talk about that? Because you have people waking up out here in their mid-30s with no purpose. And they are, it's bleak out here. They out here. And, and again, life is an energy battle. Energy battle. It's an energy. Skynet wants me to be out of here. So let me finish this up. Uh, yes, this is Vax, home of the $35,000 millionaire. Um, you will be treated like a trick with your American dollars. So yes, like a trick. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else I got here. There you go. <laughs> Uh, one time, my cousin, I have 20 boy cousins. I've told y'all this. They were like, oh, you in the OB? I said, what is OB? I was so confused. They're all laughing. It's old balls. Like, nobody, nobody's into old balls. They're into the money attached to the old balls. 
You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You gotta be careful. There you go. Exactly. So the so Dallas has the most Grammys, most Grammy writers, most Grammy music producers. It's weird. Tim Jackson, I think that's funny. Tim Jackson used to always wear red. I'm actually very proud of Tim switching to yellow. Thank God. Listen. Come on. This is an energy thing. Will Smith, oldest son, always gets sick when he goes to certain countries. It's an energy battle. We're going to leave that alone. It's very creepy. It's very creepy. It's And when you hear them say it out loud, you're like, baby, baby, like you do know, like I'm... <laughs> Somebody said something creepy. And my friend was like, well, they have good business advice, so I'm going to still listen. But I wouldn't leave them alone with children. Uh, that that right there, that's all I needed to know. Uh, which books? Which books? On overconnected parents? Let me know. Listen. I Y'all hear me when I go to Atlanta. I go to Atlanta, but I get back out of Atlanta. I it's, it's something about that city. I like it. I enjoy it. But I get just enough. As soon as I touch down, I feel the energy. And I'd be like, ooh, Jesus. Be a fence. What's going on down here in this city? What's happening? What's going on down here? <laughs> Y'all doing something. And that's the thing. L.A. lost that power. I don't know how to explain it to you. But you people are like, I got to get to California. I got to get to California. I got to get to. Like, it was almost like a trance. Like, I've got to get to California. I got to get out there. The Bay, Oakland. I got to get to California. You'd be like, what's out there? What? What? I have family out there. What's out there? I, you know, anytime I hear Los Angeles City of Fallen Angels, all that stuff, I used to watch the show. I still watch it, Bosch. And they would do this intro of LA and it was so beautiful. It was almost like a trance. You're like, I got to go there. It looks like hell, but I got to go there. And so I want you to understand cities have energy. Cities have energy. That's why we talk about the Rust Belt states and these uh, parts of Pennsylvania are like Alabama. You talk about parts of Florida is like hillbilly country. I was down in Pensacola and it was mullets and rednecks everywhere. And people were like, hey, sweetie, hey, you go ahead, girl. You go ahead, sweetie. I'd be like, who is talking to me? Start getting nervous uh, because the energy in the city was a little funky. Honey, it is. And I'm not trying to go all crazy on y'all, but I want y'all to understand that. See, that is, listen, go watch the videos of people who left Atlanta. Now, a lot of times they complain about the traffic or they complain about something else, but it's something about the energy. There's been a couple people lately like something about the energy was off. Listen, New Orleans is on a whole nother spiritual level. Whole nother, whole nother in a trance like no other. I, only other place I can describe that level I felt in New Orleans is Charleston, South Carolina at a plantation wedding. I thought I was going to throw up in my stomach multiple times. I said, man, did I drink something? Is something wrong with my stomach? I, I didn't drink anything yet. What's going on? It's creep, creepy, creepy, very spiritual, very spiritual. You already know, baby. You already know. Listen, listen, if you actually go, let's talk to older black people, go talk to old white people and old black people about certain areas in town. And there's even a place in Mississippi where they they courted off all these black people and they wouldn't let them leave. It was basically a, a prisoner of war camp when they freed the slaves. It was 20,000 people in there and they were just dying of disease and everything. It's called like Mississippi Punch Bowl. Um, if anybody knows the city, put it in here. And this area that was full of bodies because they never came and cleaned the bodies out. And when they finally let the black people out, out of 20,000, I think less than 5,000 survived. It was just all this death there, right? It grows the most beautiful fruits and vegetables and everything, and no one picks it. Nobody eats it. The city just lets it fall on the ground and rot over there because they know what's in that ground. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even in our parts of North Carolina where they had Civil War battles, if you step out there in the morning on a quiet morning, you will be like, something is out here. I got to go. I got to go. I'm listen, you already know. You already know. You already know. Blood cries out from the land. 
My husband is from New Orleans and he says there's no way he could have survived in NO. He was grateful. Honey, it's something about New Orleans, like the air. I feel it. See, listen, a lot of people say that about Atlanta. That's from there. I mean, Tyler Energy out there, Tyler Studios out there doing. Let me be quiet. <laughs> Let me just say that. I'm going to end the show in a second. But I want you to understand, there are people blowing up on YouTube. And when I get on the phone with them, because I, because when you have a YouTube channel for years, people are like, oh, my God, I used to watch you or something. They give you the tricks and tips. Like, I got some good tips and trips today earlier, and it was great. I even talked to O'Shea Duke Jackson for 40 minutes about when he was coming over for the Kevin Samuels thing. We talked about business and being in, in Africa and all this other stuff. And um, that's another conversation for another day. But I was like, dude, uh, I'm not willing to do nothing strange for no change. I'm not doing no weird stuff. But there are certain YouTube channels that just pop for no reason other than that person's in L.A. or that person's, if you notice, Atlanta. YouTubers popping, a lot of New York YouTubers popping, and it's not the video quality, it's not the sound, it's it's something. So I'll leave that alone. But I want you to understand, like, y'all, I don't never, I don't never have to get a million subs. I don't never have to get a million views. I will gladly buy traffic. I will gladly buy traffic. I will pay for traffic because I just know something's off. I'm going to Vid Summit and VidCon this year, and I just. Trust me, there's so much play with this computer and suppression of people's channels. It's crazy. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, there's energy when you go to California. There's an energy. Um, I go, um, there's a couple of tribes I'm going to go drop off Christmas donations this year as part of my journey. And uh, Sedona, Arizona. Go look this up. Like, this isn't just the South. Go look up Sedona, Arizona. It's a magical triangle energy place. Go look up Idaho. I know y'all are like, all these people are moving to Idaho and you can't understand why, but I want you to understand the power of energy. Idaho has like this huge number of hot springs in a certain triangle going towards Yellowstone. And every single hot spring I visited when I was traveling by myself, I was kind of scared. So I'm a woman by myself. I, I see some things that make me nervous as a Native American person. There's stuff with Native American names and we're near a reservation, but then you go and read the sign. Hey, these historical hot springs were by this tribe, but we blocked the tribe from going to it for 50 years because we put them on the reservation three miles down the street and wouldn't let them come back to these holy hot springs. Now, this is a sacred place to these people, and they're five miles down the street on the reservation. And if they get caught out of the reservation in the hot springs, you're going to hurt them. That's how powerful water is, y'all. That's how spiritual water is. And when I stopped at one of the places in Idaho, I was like, oh, this looks like there's a motorcycle gang out here today. I don't know if I need to be here. And then I looked over at the park and it was full of Indian people. And I walked over. And I'm like, they here. So they ain't, they ain't taking none of them out right now. So I'm going to be OK. <laughs> I just want you to understand water is powerful. But there are many other cities and places in the United States that have huge power that certain people would block people from. Imagine being an Indian person and every Christmas you went and spent the Christmas at the wall, the falls, the hot springs, and they got you five miles down the street from a place of connection. I, it just blew my mind. So there was stuff about Idaho that I was like, ugh, yuck, right? But it is what it is. Very, the spirit, Kiki, they're exhausted, they're depressed, they're frustrated, they're angry, and then they get on these buses and they get on this transportation. They don't want to be there. It's just a, it's a recipe for disaster. Ooh, ooh, I'm a, okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. I don't want no beef from Chicago or Detroit. I noticed in Dallas, there's a ton of Detroit folks working construction, helping build those houses. I do know that. Oh yeah, listen, look at, go look at Sugar Land, Texas. You know, people don't understand this about Houston and going towards Louisiana, um, but they were the most, um, what's the word we're looking for? They were the most violent plantations alive out there the most violent plantations uh slaves would cry there's awful i mean read it if you want uh it's hard to read but there was a thing about how slaves would be on the train and they would sell them from georgia and places put rough slaves or slaves that caused rebellions or slaves that fought they would put them on these trains and they would take them hold on
Hello, hello, hello. Okay, I gotta get finished up, I guess. Um, they would take them on these trains and that when they told them where they were going, they were going to Sugarland. You know, Houston had got this name of sugar cane fields and cotton and hot. And basically you were sent to Texas to die. If you were, and there's a white man who from North England, New England or Boston area, and he came down, and he sat by the train to write about it. And he said the screams coming from the train when people realized they were stepping, they were riding into Houston, that they were saying, kill us, like kill us now. And they were just screaming because they realized like the average slave that lived in Texas did not live long, especially if they were in the Houston area. Um, if you see like where they found all these graves over by that sugar mill in Houston, right off the highway, all the bones had breaks and axes. So, well, basically you're cutting with machetes all day and people would accidentally hit their hand, their leg, and they'd, they'd die. So yeah, um, Houston has some some weirdness out there. Yep. Let me finish this out and get on out of here. <laughs> Salt the house. Um, you know, you're putting water everywhere, you know. Go go look in Louisiana. They put water jars out for places. Y'all you know. You already know. Let me see what else y'all got in here. Honey, if you know, you know. If you're from South Carolina, you've drove there and been like, oof, what is happening? Baltimore, yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh oh. Don't come for her, but she said Beyonce music be giving her that trance too. Listen, I I don't listen to um, I don't listen to no new rap, none of it. I can't, can't want to do. <laughs> Listen, you already know. So clearly I got to buy another one of these. So I dropped this, this laptop and I dropped this thing the other day and it's, it's on this last leg. Uh, Erica Badu, Erica Badu is very into witchcraft. Very much. Very much. Yes. I'm gonna leave that alone. It's, that's the thing. Look at these. Uh, I'm gonna even go there on a, a tip that might freak y'all out, but go listen to some of this new Christian music. There's several Baptist practitioners like, hey, 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 that I don't like that. Don't listen to that. Wow, thank you, spiritually evolving. I appreciate the 1999 super chat. You already know. Listen, why are they always blaming Disneyland for when people grow up and they don't want to be realistic about relationships? Okay. Here he go with this. I would say fit and feminine. Let me tell you something. I see fat ass women every day of the week and twice on Sunday married. Y'all let them old talking points go. It's just full of shit. No, it's the computer. I dropped the computer and the little uh, plug in is like, like the pewter. I can see a crack on the computer and I'm like, oh no. Um, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it best by see if I can send it to HP. Listen, okay. Exactly. I've, I've gone to events y'all and, and you can go watch some of my old podcasts. Listen to what the person says on the podcast when they interview me. There's been four in a row where they were like, Erica, I met you and your energy was so amazing that I was like, I don't know. I just need to get to know her. People energy is a real thing. When you're a light and a powerful light, people can feel that. When you're full of joy, they can feel that. I have one person I know that she has had a bad life. And the energy, you're like, girl, let go get that therapy.
Listen, exactly. Everybody knows the classic song. She's a brick house. She's a brick house. Like everybody is not on the same stuff and that's okay. You let that go. Let that go. What do you mean? What was I able to, I'm federally reg, registered with the Eastern Band of Cherokees of North Carolina. Are you joking me? Uh, the other, I'm registered with the Choctaw Nation. Are you serious right now? Are you joking? I've always been registered since I was born a baby, baby. I can, I can chart my family back to the Dolls Rose. Can you? I'm not out here when these black people are like, well, I'm Indian. No, no, I can chart my family back. I can chart my family back to owning a plantation and owning slaves. Indian people owning slaves and uh, Alabama. Can you please don't, please don't challenge me on, on this. I, I, they're one of the number one ways that this is an energy conversation. This is power. If you don't know where you're from and who your people are, it's a great way to cause confusion for you for the rest of your whole life. I want you to understand Chris Rock made this conversation where he was, they were telling him his great, great, somebody was the highest ranking black person in the civil war. And he said, if I knew that growing up, I would know that I was I wasn't just ghetto trash. I actually came from something. And a lot of you don't know who you are. And you try to do the little slotty shit towards me and a little sly shit towards me. Please don't do sly shit towards me. Like, I'm not the one. And blocked. So thank you. Thank you, John. Yes. <laughs> there it is. Listen, let's really go there. Anna Nicole Smith, her daughter that looks just like her to a T, and then drugs took her and her son out. Listen, say what you will about Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston. I swear to you, Bobby Brown is, is like sacrificing folks so he can live because that dude ought to be dead too. Uh, there's a lot I can say, but I'm going to stop. There you go. So true. I dispatched for a United Trucking Company. The drivers never wanted to retire. As soon as they did, usually in their 70s, they passed away within a couple of years. They really did. <laughs> no, that's why I said, Mark, I knew you was in here. Um, I There's a couple boundaries books. Um, you got boundaries for couples, boundaries for teenagers, boundaries for women, boundaries for men. It's the same dude who wrote that series of boundaries. But there is a book called The Overconnected Family. If somebody could Google it, let me know. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> she said my husband 58 and I'm 46. Stop it. You stop it. Savannah, mm-hmm. A and one, where you been, man? You missed the whole show. We've been talking about energy. You missed it. Yep. Let me see. Good Lord, y'all. Got a lot here. Yoni Health, all them helps. All of it. I mean, thank you. I mean, whether, you know, whether, you know, this is the thing about being on camera. You're going to see me, right? Uh, there's a level of credibility and honestness with camera. There's a lot of people running around YouTube that don't show their face or their body, but I've actually seen them and they like a 400 pound man. I, 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 we will never talk bad about men in that way. Um, they have studies to show that they'll put two women on stage. They'll, they'll make the first one speak for five minutes and then the next one speak for five minutes. And depending on how attractive the woman was and if she wore lipstick on her lips, the men listened longer to the more attractive woman than they did the unattractive woman. So do with that what you will. But I always tell people, it, you know, put a little lipstick on, put, just make it up a little bit because people aren't listening to you. I, that's why I, that's why I'm going to turn half these videos into the audio podcast and call it the Classic Climb Show and let them just rock on the Internet. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying. AM1, it's called it's called concessions. OK. It's called concessions, AM1.
<laughs> Listen, scratching, scratching. Um, there you go. Listen, John, my friend joined the Navy and she said when she was there, they had the, like the least number of women They only had 14. So the captains moved them up, up like you have levels on the boat. They moved them up to like where they're down the hall from them. So imagine that she was, it was just her and 13 other women. And she said, and the numbers were so skewed that they called back and said, hey, we can't have this ship. This ship numbers is way off. So they pushed those women and put them in a um, like a higher ranking cabins up near top just for their safety. And I'm like, girl, why would you, why are you joining the Navy and not in an office somewhere? So. Listen, the streets, this is filthy Frank Black. I was going to do a video on this, how light the streets are right now. And how there's a, <laughs> this sounds terrible. There's a Taco Bell from our office. And Taco Bell's trash, all it just is. But ever since gas has gone up and people's money is low, the lines around Taco Bell have been crazy. It's crazy. Uh, it is. That's what they're doing. Listen, working in hospital is hard on a soul. It's got to be. You're dealing with people who are in, in pain, death, dying. Not this show. This show ain't on that. Make sure you join my classes. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah. El Paso has a weird spirit, y'all. <laughs> like, I don't go there. If you know anything about El Paso, if you look across the border, they be killing people. Like huge numbers when the the pandemic broke out people who were sick crossed the border into the Houston, uh, el paso hospitals and the hospital was just so full of dead people they had a moving truck outside they had like the box trailer um 53 inch uh dry vans out there well refrigerator vans but you know what i'm trying to say um and so i don't i, I don't deal with el paso the energy's funky out there too it's possible, child branch. It depends on where that person's at. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all trying to act like, like I'm saying something crazy about ATL. California's food is fresh. Um, there, are, there are three men in California that I am so attracted to, but I know I can't get them to leave California. AM1 is not one of them. They both, they all live in San Diego, San Bernardino, and L.A. I know they ain't, ain't going to move for me, and I'm not moving to California for them, so I know it ain't going to happen. But California is lit. AM1's got 20 girls on his roster, so I'm not talking about him. <laughs> Dang, y'all had a lot of conversation in here. Ooh, Ashton, I'd say Dallas. I say, I'd say Dallas. Real to be really honest, Ashton, like you still gonna have all the fun of going out, and you're gonna have more business opportunities and more job opportunities in Dallas. Just 100 percent truthful. Like I literally am tempted all the time to go get a second apartment in Dallas. Just the opportunity, like you just bump into people. It's like Austin. You just bump into people. Hey, yeah, I'm a hedge fund. Like you're a hedge fund person, like all the time. Ooh, Cleveland surprises me more. Now, Brent, you done asked me that like five times, baby. If you don't get the hit the Amazon, I don't know. I don't got it in front of me. There you go, exactly. Ooh, you got a lot in here. There you go. Thank you so much. Them nurses wear you out. The caregiver spirit can get worn out on the care. Mm. Oh, Philly. Philly is another place. I just, I got to visit there, so I'm going to be quiet. Th that's what I'm saying, y'all. Tyler Perry Stewart is on top of an old KKK, old Confederate soldier place. And I'm like, something about it just bothers me so hard. It bothers me.
That's what I said, Mary. I keep showing y'all that. I'm like, there's something going on there. Gene Hammond, I felt that at last Custer State. Think about that. Battlegrounds. Go. I'm just telling you, try, try it this year at one of them reenactments. The battlegrounds of where Civil War happened. It's a weird vibe. We went on a field trip and I'm like, as a kid, like, what is up out here? Month, those areas when I go out there to go see where the tribes are at and stuff like that, like they got weird vibes out there too. Listen, I was trying to go look for the vortex. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I am going that way. Water is so powerful. I would, I was in Yellowstone on the, and I stopped the car, pulled over, and it said, don't cross over here. And I crossed anyway and stood by the water and took videos. I was like, oh, the water. And then I got back in. Water is powerful, y'all. Yep. You're dropping nothing but facts. is deeper than what you see. Listen, y'all, I can't say everything I want to say. But you, you get what I'm saying. It does. There is a powwow out there, too, every year. I want y'all to look up, if you get a chance, Shinnecock Powwow, New York. Labor Day. I always try to make it. And it is the biggest a collection of Native Americans up here that look like this. Shinnecock Pow Wow. Go look it up. Um, I'm putting somebody in timeout because they keep asking questions not related to the title of the show. You ask something not related to the title of the show, we're done with that. We're going to just start blocking folks. Pay attention. Be in step. Energy. Energy. Listen, if you look at the Kardashians and you look at Erica Badu and every man that's inside their life and that touches them, and I'm I'm being careful because I don't want to get any kind of flags on YouTube, but go look up the real reason the Turkish started the Armenian genocide. Like they and they made them basically do what they did to the Native Americans. They made them walk through the mountains. Um, if you know anything about Armenians, they are very close, if not a little bit linked towards gypsies. And they were very much into the dark arts. And the Turkish who were Muslim, sent them outside, like, hey, you're gonna get up out these cities. Y'all gonna do the march to death through the mountains, and we don't care. And so, of course, now we're like, Turkey, shame on you, Turkey. But if you guys actually go look at a map, uh, when you try to figure out how all those people left Syria and got to Europe, it's you can walk. Like you could walk it. You could take boats and you can walk and you can walk through very countries and you get there. So I don't know if they made the Armenians go through the mountainside, which was so dangerous, which caused so many of them to die. But really go look up Armenians in America. Go look them up on the money chart. They're so high up on the money chart. And y'all, there, there's there's powers and stuff out there. I, you know what I'm saying? It's it's an energy thing. It's an energy thing. I went to New York and like full of elderly. Hey, thank you. Say, hey, kid. You know, here's the funny thing about this stuff. When people on the Internet talking bad about me or anybody or saying something about big people, I laugh. I am one seeing this. I go places and men are still like, hey, what's up, girl? <laughs> what's up? I like them thick. What's up, girl? Let's do what we're going to do. You're like that. Like. It, white men, too. Texas, they don't care. I remember I was working at Lowe's and this boy was trying to date me. I was like, if you don't get out of my face, go back over to the side where y'all stack them books. Uh, yeah, it should be in the replay. Just go back in the replay. We actually have another update to uh, go back in the and the Zoach Clash, go into the replay. It should be in there. You should click the link and be able to play. And then also, I think next week or next Wednesday or one of the Wednesdays coming up, we have another live that's going to kind of do a touching on ebooks, affiliate marketing, and audiobook stuff. I'm just trying to get it wrapped up. Ooh, yeah. You got to be careful. Here's the thing I am a um, energy person and sunlight person. And I literally have to go outside. Um, I just have to get sun. Like I, one of my latest places I live, this 
I was on the other side of the sun and I will never do that again because I would oversleep. I'd feel so like, oh, I'm about to fall asleep. I'm about to go out. You got to have someone's light on your face. <laughs> Y'all wowing. Listen, Bobby Brown, I'm telling you, Bobby Brown is just something, something wrong with Bobby Brown. Y'all don't care what you say. I'm not even into thick women, but Anna Nicole Smith, Kay Upton and Raven Simone are all up my alley. You know, symmetricalness and good lookingness and boobs, you know, vitality. They work if they work. You dig what I'm saying? Like the man that wants it, wants it. Every man ain't going to want it and that's okay. But the man that wants it, wants it, right? Oh, thank you so much, you guys. Put that in there. Listen, if you can go by a military base, you'll have a date every day. <laughs> hey, AM1, AM1, listen, there are many dudes out here that are, let's just be really honest. I think earlier Super Sly and AM1 talked about polyamory or something to that effect. And let's just be really honest. Most people are lazy, men and women. And a lot of topos are low performers. So they ain't even trying to make the one woman they with happy or provide it for or have enough money. So they ain't trying to provide for two. They just doing enough to chill, watch ESPN, eat some good food and take naps. And I ain't mad at it. Like I respect it. You know what I'm saying? If you're a 50 year old dude and you, and you find some little 35, 40 year old girl to marry and she have one kid and that's it. I respect it. There is a black dude off CNN BC used to be on the news and he's a lawyer. And he married this girl. She looks so young. I was like, oh, my God. He's like, no, she's 37. Like, he was he was always telling people, no, she's 37. Black don't crack. Like, he was always putting that out there. Like, no, no, she's 37. Because she looks so young and youthful. And he was like, I'm older. And I don't want people to think that's the kind of man I am. So men know there's some association to that. Like, you tricking or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all don't play like we being silly or being ridiculous. Y'all know there's some association to older dudes getting very young chicks. It's not always a positive light, okay? Let's not play that. Very competitive. And, and when you're a, a powerful, light, charming person, you bring a lot of people to you. So you got to have a, you have to protect yourself. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. El Paso has that New Mexico energy. San Diego's San Antonio is just boring. <laughs> that too. I've only been to Hartford, Connecticut, but it's tripping. I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. <laughs> Some of y'all are saying stuff in here. I don't even want to know. Yeah, they got weird stuff going on over there. Oh, uh, no, y'all water is too cold over there. Uh, say that again. I need contacts in Dallas. Have a place there, small art studio, and thinking of giving it up because I can't find a base. You can't find a base or you can't find clients. Uh, I'm confused on that. Speaking of energy in the cities, since I've been overseas, I have a test at Toyoka. To 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 uh, listen, Tokyo's energy is cold and draining as F, but Osaka energy is vibrant and revitalizing. People make a difference. They really do Santos Clutch. My grandparents were both stationed in the women's army and men's army, married, stayed there for seven years. Both my father and my uncle were born in Japan, and um, it was going to be this big thing for us to return on his 87th birthday to Japan in, 29, in 2020, March of 2020, to see the cherry blossoms. Well, we all know what happened in March 2020 didn't happen. So I will still go to Japan, but I just uh, will be by myself. My grandpa's like, I ain't going none of them countries with some germs in it. <laughs> He's done. He's done. Listen. AM1, but who? 
AM one. That's like the chicken versus the egg. We already know. Women are water and men are thirsty. It should be men because they fill up all the hospices in the hospitals, but that's another conversation. Go talk to any hospice, any nurse. They take like let's we can go get a camera and a field trip. You go to all these uh, these homeless shelters full of old men. Full of them. This is true. Anyway, all right, yes. This is your girl Erica. It's been an hour and 30 minutes. I did not realize we we're gonna go do this. Um, no problem, no problem. I see you. I appreciate you. You got it. Uh, I want y'all to understand. I wanted to do this because of all the videos I've been seeing and you know, I could do a whole list of movie <laughs> reviews about, you know, um, Black Panther and all this stuff. And like, and uh, even the one where, what's it called when um, she has the, the covering over her eyes and she's like trying to turn the two children or trying to run out uh, with the covering over their eyes. What's the name of that one with Sandra, Sandra Bullock in it? Uh, all those, all those movies are very symbolic of energy and spirits. And I want you to understand that like, you need to protect the energy. Keep it up. You can't entertain everybody. You can't talk to everybody. You just can't. There's this quote where the guy said, um, y'all think y'all need whole nations, but like you need three motherfuckers that are about, about it, about it. And y'all can take over a whole country. And <laughs> it's a real thing because it's, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to contain strong energy among a big group of people but in a small group of people, one or two people, okay, husband and wife relationships, whatever you want to say, um, you can push on. So that's what I had. Yeah, bird box. Thank you so much. Yes, let me rest and reset. <laughs> but anyway, you guys, this is your girl, Erica. Have a great night. I hope to see you at some of the future events in the fall. If I do not, it's been real.